Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with a Pittsburgh Steelers analysis and recap of this, and my brain's a little broken here, much like the Pittsburgh Steelers offense as they lose to the Cleveland Browns 13-10 Sunday, Pittsburgh now 6-4, third place in the AFC North on the season, let's talk about it. 10 points for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, granted, it's a really talented Browns defense. It's healthy. That was not the issue and the reason why people thought that Pittsburgh would win this game. The issue was with the Browns offense and their rookie quarterback in their situation. Um, But still, just 10 points, no passing game again. And that's really at least two, two and a half, two and three quarters weeks where there's really been no semblance of a passing game. And it starts with Kenny Pickett, and there's just no getting around that. And I think Mike Tomlin, in his post-game pressers, this one especially, does not, at least publicly, want to burden or put that responsibility on Pickett. Not that it's all on him solely. It certainly is not, but you have to call it out. Pickett's not been good. Has to be better. It's been a continual issue where the numbers just are not there, even knowing the quality of the opponent. Um that he's going against. So I, I think my big takeaway is that the picket has just been just, just miserable for multiple weeks and just moments of positive play, not in this game, but you think about maybe the Packers game, a throw or two, the Titans game late in that one, but really it's just been three weeks of just completely lackluster play. But to me, the other thing that comes to mind in this one is miscommunication. And this was really Pittsburgh's first true road game of the season. And I should have recognized that more. I picked Pittsburgh to win. I was wrong. I should have recognized that environment. They played road games. They were at Houston, which is a decent environment. But then they were at the Raiders, at the Rams. Those are almost home games for Pittsburgh. You go to Cleveland, AFC North road battle for the first time this season, dealing with that. And it certainly showed. This did not not look like a team that played at all, practiced at all, knew each other. It, It felt like, you know, a bunch of Josh Dobbs out there where no one knew who the other person was because the, the communication was abysmal, whether that's defensively with 12 men on the field in, in two situations. And there was a lot of rotation happening, but still communication issues that burn timeouts. And, and those were crucial um, offensively receivers and quarterback, not on the same page routinely three, four five times in this game, just not on the same page in terms of route, um, you know, versus where that ball was going. And Pickett would say after the game that the Browns game plan surprised the Steelers, surprised him. They were expecting man, which to be fair, I did as well. And Cleveland came out and played a lot of zones. So the Browns coaching staff game plan ahead of Pittsburgh, this has happened before to the Steelers, unacceptable. And you think about, you know, sometimes where the center was snapping the ball before Pickett was ready. Think about the screen game being painful, had some success, but just a just a lot of doing to try to get, you know, a 10-yard play on a screen on a screen pass, excuse me. So just communication overall, the crowd noise certainly got to Pittsburgh, rattled Pittsburgh, and it it really was as evident as you're ever gonna see um in a game like that. Now the bright spot, of course, was Jalen Warren with that 74-yard run, great blocks in space by Roderick Jones, Mason Cole had a really good block downfield. Miles Boykin kind of getting in the way. That that was great. Um, Warren was the spark. He was the offense. And, you know, whether that's creating, running with with power, getting more than what was blocked, um, he was the guy. Only nine carries for for Warren in this one, which definitely feels low. Pittsburgh didn't have a high volume of plays, didn't have a lot of long drives, not a lot of consistency. But after the 74-yard touchdown, it took a long time for him to really even touch the ball again. And... That's just, that's not acceptable in a game like that where he's running well. I thought Harris ran well early, but then didn't do much late, and Warren was clearly the hot hand, so you have to go with him as opposed to trying to hold the split. I get right after the, the touchdown on that uh, next possession Pittsburgh had, Warren might still be a little gassed, so I'm fine with Harris being out there to start and, and getting some looks, but um, just the distribution of it was not strong enough overall. Offensive line play in pass protection was a mess. Stan Moore cooked by Miles Garrett. That that is granted. Miles Garrett, you expect those things. Generally speaking, to him him have a tough time. Um, I've said in the past, I don't think Moore has done well against Garrett. I think Pittsburgh's been able to hide it and minimize it enough by pairing blocking schemes, protection schemes with pass concepts. Did not do it in this game. They were in third and long a couple times, although I'm getting on a sidebar here, but Third down offense, what, 3-14, I think, on third down, whatever the number was. They were 1-9 and nine on third down at one point. Just just miserable. And some of those were makeable. They weren't all third and 8, third and 10 plus. They were third and 2, third and 4. Some of those had to be made and were not. But even the first play, talk about you're at your 7, you do a 5-step drop with Pickett, you got 1v1 more on 
Uh, Miles Garrett, there is a blitz coming, but you, know, you can't have a five-step drop in your end zone when Moore is going to be 1v1 on Miles Garrett. Usually in the past, Pittsburgh's going to get the ball out quick, three-step drop, quick game in those situations where they're not knowing or, or either they don't know if they can give more help or they know that they can't give more help. It's 1v1, and that was just, I think, a bad game plan, bad schematics overall, but certainly Moore had his hands full with Garrett, and um, you kind of see the way that Garrett's been winning in past games, just not getting home. He got home this one and, and helped write the headlines, which Pittsburgh is usually good about avoiding. But just offensively, miserable, awful, one of the worst performances you're going to see, and that's all there is to really say about that. Defensively, it was tough early, and the Browns had a good drive to put the ball in the end zone, and they got into a rhythm. They used their play action game well, and Pittsburgh felt out of sorts. Again, new pieces, some injuries in this one, kind of really, I think, gunked things up. But they settled down. I mean, they allowed 13 points, three of which came in the final five seconds. So it's really hard to be mad about that performance overall. You can talk about maybe lack of turnovers in terms of the volume of it, although Cleveland played, played things incredibly safe. They did get the one interception that helped uh, prevent a potential field goal by Cleveland. I'm sure Tom will talk about they didn't return that one for a touchdown. So that's on the defense, you know, that kind of stuff he made after the uh, Jacksonville game. Um, but it's hard to be, be too mad about the overall performance just based on uh, the actual output and the results. The run game did not dominate. Uh, the pass game, they allowed nothing over their head. Not that Cleveland was trying to do anything like that. Cam Haywood was excellent. Landon Roberts, kudos to him, 15 tackles. I mean, there were some concerns, some issues, again, communication type stuff. Uh, Joey Porter Jr. struggling with Amari Cooper, which is to be expected, but you kind of see maybe that lack of fluidity that Porter has and things he has to work on against a really good route runner like Cooper as opposed to a DeAndre Hopkins who's less like that and kind of more of a physical contested guy which is in Porter's wheelhouse uh safety depth being thin with Elijah Riley getting hurt no Minka no Keanu Neal etc um but again 13 points three in the final five seconds I mean overall that's enough to win a game obviously and then special teams thought Calvin Austin had a couple punts over his head that probably shouldn't have in that hurt field position which is very important in low scoring you know, just terrible offensive outputs in games like these. Presley Harvin, two terrible punts, two shanks, a 20-yarder, one that had a net of like 21 yards after a real low-liner punt. Uh, punt those came back-to-back, -back, so um, that was unacceptable. And just in that fourth quarter, Pittsburgh's last offensive drive, just get in Boswell's range, and you win the game, and they just could not do that. So I uh, can't say I'm, I'm terribly surprised. Again, I picked Pittsburgh. I was wrong about that, but, um, you know, just... A Pittsburgh thing to do to lose to a, a quarterback like this. You can chalk that up with Terrell Pryor and Ryan Finley and Bruce Gatkowski and other assorted Raiders quarterbacks. And this is just another example of that. But I just thought Pittsburgh was really out of sorts offensively, communication wise, no passing game, and just incredibly frustrated by that fact. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. A lot of recap on the channel. Check out the site as well, Steelers Depot. We're going to have film rooms. I think a, a Jalen Warren film room breakdown, so there may not be one on the channel, but certainly one uh, on the website, so check that out. If you guys could like this video, also subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that. Sorry for being a little flustered. It's been a, a crazy day. It's going to be a tough week uh, for, for myself and the site and probably every Steelers fan out there, but uh, vent away your comments and your thoughts in the uh, comments below, of course. Thank you again for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.